All right. Thanks for joining us. We're back here with setting up Azure resources. I'm your host, Richard Knuckles. Thanks for joining us. We left off last time having set up a new resource group, resource group called East US Demo Prod RG. You can see that here in the last session, we went over the naming convention for resources in Azure using this method for naming, this naming convention. See that here. In this episode, we're going to start looking over the resource group options that you have here before we dive into creating Azure resources services later. So the basic service that's a resource group is for collecting, grouping, searching, filtering, and managing the Azure services that you create. So all Azure services, excepting the resource group itself, must have a resource group. So all one reason, the main reason to set up your resource group first is that you're going to be adding all other services that you add to at least a resource group. So you have to have at least one to every service will have it will have one. So you should set one up and consider how you're going to structure your resource group and the security and maintenance and managing that comes along with that. So the resource group functions as a security boundary where you can apply security, inherited security, role-based access controls, security to all of the services that are within a particular resource group as well as you can delete all of the resource you can delete all of the resources in azure that are in a single resource group at once by deleting the resource group itself so those are two primary reasons that you'd want to consider how do you how are you going to structure your resource group and your res multiple resource groups potentially for the services that you set up in Azure. You can see here on the overview blade that we have the name of the subscription that this resource group belongs to, the list of resources that are in this resource group, which are none so far, we haven't created any or added any, and we can also add tags. Tags are yet another way that you can add data to your resources in Azure, which allows you to filter them and find more information about who's either, however you want to use tags. One of the primary ways you can use a tag is to attach the name of the creator to that group or to that uh, resource group itself. Tags form a name value pair, so you can have any particular name and value that you wish to add in a tag. In this case, we'll just add a single tag here called author with my name. Activity log here shows all of the actions within a searchable, filterable window that uh, have occurred for your particular service. These four, five in this case, the options for blades in the service that you're looking at, in this case the resource group, are common to all of the services across Azure, overview, activity logs, access control, tags. 
and events for most reasons, most services as well. So we can see that we've deleted a resource group with the same name half an hour ago, and we've created a new resource group. And you can get more information on who did these operations and what their outcome was. All right, let's talk about access control and security with Azure services. So Azure can have multiple layers of security depending on the service itself, but all services in Azure will have at least a top level access control, which grants permissions to manage and access the service itself. This is accessed via the IAM access control blade for the particular service. And resource groups are special in that access policies applied to the resource group are inherited by resources that are in that resource group. So applying access at the resource group level is an easy way to control multiple services in Azure. Let's control the access to them. So we've got multiple things we can do in this blade. We can add users to a particular role, granting them access, various levels of access to the service. And we can see what the current access is. Just did a search for my account here, Azure One at rknuckles.com. And you can see here's the account that's shown up here under the check access window. And see that I'm a service administrator since I'm the owner of this subscription and the creator of this service. I get this at, at creation. So I don't have any other users assigned here. You can filter this down by the various types of Accounts that are available through Azure Active Directory. We've got users, groups, service principles. All of these are service principles that will be used by services if when they are created. Got other types of items that are in Azure Active Directory as managed applications that you could assign access to for service-to-service -service authentication. But in this case, we'll most likely be using, in most cases, you'll be using an Azure Active Directory user group or a service principle for one of the machine or service-to-service -service authentication. As you can see, the only one so far is, is signed with any access here because we just created this resource group shortly ago. So role assignments are something slightly different than what you're used to in an on-premise based Active Directory scenario. In Active Directory you, you normally have users in groups you might have uh, organizations and other security boundaries like that, but you typically have an administrator, whether that's a domain admin or a local admin, and you've got a couple of locally installed groups, whether that's a backup operators or users or other local groups that you've created their own. Azure resources have roles that have been created across Azure for 
clustering and grouping together types of access for ease of applying access to services. So we've got no roles assigned here so far, aside from the system administrator that I've got by default. Let's take a look at the roles list here so we can see all of the roles that are available for assignments for users in this service. So these are the built-in roles and see that are available for this service resource group. Some of the primary ones you'll see and use frequently are owner, contributor, and reader. We have quite a few other types which may apply to particular services, Azure Event Hubs, Azure Sentinel, backup operators and billing readers for the subscriptions, and virtual machines, cognitive service users. So these are roles that would give a particular set of permissions to a user or group that's uh, assigned that role on that service. So the owner lets you manage everything. The reader lets you view everything, but not manage everything, but not manage anything. And the contributor allows you to manage everything except security, which is the access control here for the resource. You need to be an owner. You'd have the owner role assigned to you for a particular resource in order to assign other users groups access on that service. So we want to add another account. Uh, access to this, we can do a couple of things. We could create a custom role, which would give them particular access. We could use a existing role. We could make them a co-administrator. Let's see what adding a role assignment looks like for these. So first we check to see the role that we want to give them. Contributor is the most useful one if the user that you're giving access to should have some ability to configure this service. If you are supporting a, a DevOps role where your developer or engineer should be modifying, updating, and managing the Azure service that you've created on their behalf, then you may want to give them contributor access for that. If all they need to do is potentially utilize the service, which might be read and, write, read and write files to a blob store in Azure storage or read and write data from a SQL database, then the reader role is one you might look at choosing. The owner role is really for the highest level of access to services. Let's choose contributor. We've got a few users already set up and groups in our active directory. We've got a backup user here. We've got a tech user here. And we also have a group called technical operations. So you can, you can add users to a particular resource or to a particular role. At either the group level or the user level from the actor directory service. So, see here, that's successful. We've successfully added the technical operations group as a contributor for this resource, this resource being a resource group. So, if you have a user who's in the technical operations group, like the technical user, user log into the Azure portal, they will be able to since they have contributor role access to this resource, they will be able to modify and delete this resource, the resource group that we've assigned their permissions to. We created a tag earlier in the video, and you can see here's the tag that we created. 
can remove them if we need to or add more changes. Click subscribe to see more videos like this. If you liked this video, hit the like button. Leave a comment in the section below to let me know what videos you'd like to see in the future.